Amanda. Amanda. Viva EFF Viva. Viva EFF Viva. Kula EFF Kula. Kula EFF Kula. Tata EFF Tata. Tata EFF Tata. Panzi ngamasela panzi. Panzi ngamasela panzi. Diabulela, thank you. Ustalo. And greet all our leaders who are here. And greet our elders, Avu Kogo, Navumkulu. We say thank you very much for coming out in your numbers. Because here in Ward 3, we know this place to be the home of the EFF. And we will reclaim the ground in Ward 3. Because whatever the mistakes which were committed, we are going to correct them and reclaim our place. Because Kuyasa is a home of the EFF. Omsobov is a home of the EFF. Pixley is the home of the EFF. And we are not going to be shaken by anyone. We are here to demand that the youth of Umsombovu must be hired by the municipality. And when they hire them, they must not use say names and membership of the ANC. Because when you are ANC, they don't want to give you a job. They want to sleep with you first before they give you a job. So we're going to make sure that when we take the Northern Cape, that nonsense stop. We are going to build the roads on this coastback because there are no proper roads. Everywhere where our people are found must have proper roads. And proper roads means there must not be potholes. Because when you go to our places, you find potholes the size of Zuma's swimming pool. And we cannot afford that. We cannot afford a situation where, when, where white people stay, the roads are proper. They don't have potholes. They don't have gravel road. But when you come to us, there is a gravel road. And we are under the same municipality. So we cannot allow that to continue for another five years. We are here today to say enough is enough. We are going to stop this nonsense that is happening. When we build the road, we create jobs. We need to make sure there is water in each and every house. Because water is life. We don't want this thing of water shading. That this week there is water, next week there is no water. Others don't have water at all. Every human being must have a piped water in their yard. Not even on the road we are told there is a common tap. There shouldn't be a common tap. And when we develop the water infrastructure, that's where we hire our own people to do the job. Because we have a duty to create jobs. Creation of jobs means the economy must grow. If the economy is not growing, they can tell you all the nonsense they want to tell you. They will never create jobs. So when they say to you, Zimbabweans are taking your jobs, this and that, it's not true. Because you must ask them a question. If you say Zimbabweans are taking our jobs, which factory opened in the last six years and took Zimbabweans? Because we want to go to that factory and remove those Zimbabweans. There is no such a factory. If anything, the factories are closing in South Africa. I know of two big steel companies that are shutting down. One of them is Isco. The other one has already closed in Whitbank, retrenched 5,000 workers. And Iskor is going to retrench 3,000 workers 
post office is going to retrench 3,000 workers. So when they say someone is taking your job, which one? Because the jobs are not being created. If anything, people are losing jobs. So you have to grow the economy in order to create jobs. So let's take manufacturing, for instance. It used to contribute 24.4% to the GDP. Today is contributing 14%. Manufacturing includes, amongst other things, steel and textile and so on and so forth. Textile was very big in the Cape. Today, all those factories of textile have been closed. So when you create jobs, you don't have to do anything sophisticated. You have to go back and open, reopen those textile factories so that you hire our own people to produce textile in South Africa and we don't rely on finished goods from China. Because it is the Chinese market, amongst other things, which undermined our textile industry in South Africa. So we have to go and reopen the steel factories that are closing down. Why? Steel is produced from chrome. We have a lot of chrome that we take out of South Africa. They produce steel and bring it back as a finished good called steel. But if we mine chrome here and we open a processing factory next to the mine, that is job creation. Beneficiation is job creation. So when you see trucks going to Richards Bay full of chrome, full of manganese, full of platinum, those are not trucks. Those are jobs going away from South Africa. Because if we were producing those things, yeah, not a single one of you was going to be unemployed. Let's take diamond, for instance, in the Northern Cape. You, must, you produce diamond. You're supposed to polish it here. After taking it out, take it to the next factory to polish it. After that factory, take it to the next factory to cut it. To cut diamond is not a child's play. It required attention to minute detail. After cutting it, you take it to those who produce jewelry and then it comes out as a finished product that we sell not only to ourselves but to the whole world that is a, a job chain and not only job chain but also business opportunities today in Colesbeck we rely on farms but these farms are not owned by any of us we make money for someone else and some of them even want to pay us with alcohol and not real money under the eff there is no farmer who will pay our people with alcohol all the farm workers are going to have a minimum wage and those minimum wages were going to make sure every farmer pays them because our people cannot be exploited in the farms and no one is there to fight for them. So we as a government who have a right to enter everywhere, we should go into the farms and have meetings with the workers without bosses being there to ask them about their working conditions, to ask them if they are properly paid, to ask them if they are properly housed, because there are a lot of farm workers who are staying in terrible conditions. Yet the boss stays in luxurious house just next to them. What is even heartless, which I don't like, is that the boss has got a flushing toilet in the wool farm. But the farm workers don't have a flushing toilet. And he's got water. He can just do flushing toilet for workers the whole thing goes to the same septic tank. Why he's so jealous about septic tank, I don't understand. How can a human being refuse other human beings to have their dignity? 
Because if you don't have a flushing toilet, you don't have a dignity. The ANC has not given our people flushing toilet in the past eight years. Treating you like animals. Because it's only animals who must not have a flushing toilet. So we cannot allow the ANC to continue treating you like animals. There was one billion passed to come and build houses here in Colesberg and everywhere else in Northern Cape. Till today, there's no single house because they stole the money. They took the money. Zamani Soul and his people have stolen the money that is meant for the houses of our people. Abu Kogu Navum Kulu have registered RDP houses from 1997 till today they never got. Some of them have even died without having a house. Yet the money is out. And the Northern Cape population is not big. It's a small population that you can house all of them. But a person went to eat one billion. And how do you become so proud in Colesberg where you build houses, they are not complete. You leave them incomplete. When someone could be staying in that house, you left the house and you pass those incomplete houses. Every day, you are a mayor, you are a councillor. Why are you not ashamed that we've got incomplete houses? Because all houses, when we take over as the EFF in Northern Cape, are going to be completed in less than a year. Because the money is there. We complete all of them and we give our people RDP houses that are proper. Not some cheap RDP houses for cheap life. Because you regard our life as a cheap life. We need an RDP house with three bedrooms, with dining, with kitchen, with bathroom inside, with a flushing toilet. Anything less than that, anything less than that, we are not going to accept. Why? This is not my plan. It's not an EFF plan. We got it from apartheid. Apartheid was building such houses for poor Africaners. So if apartheid can build such beautiful houses for free for poor Africaners, then we have to do better than apartheid for our own people and not this matchbox houses. A four-corner house, we must slap hands. It's not a house. A house must have corners and corners and corners. Not, it must not be too obvious. And then inside it must have a passage. Because the passage must separate the kitchen and the bedrooms. But the ANC RDP, when you get out of the kitchen, you are in the bedroom immediately. When children, when you wake up, children are playing with onion in front of your bedroom. Even how they get divided inside is not restoring human dignity. Because they divide it with one brick. If you are lucky, they divide it. And when you are this side with your wife or your husband and children are this side and you are trying to touch each other and then she's laughing. The child says, Mama, what are you laughing that side? They hear things of old people when they are young. So ours must be divided with two bricks. And then it must have a ceiling to suppress the movement of the voice. And there is privacy. Children grow under good condition. That's all we want for our people. And that can be done with diamond and manganese alone. This province can become one of the best provinces ever in South Africa. And people can want to move from their provinces to Northern Cape. Because this can be the type of provinces we seek to build. 
Jobek is going to be highly populated very soon. And movement of people is going to be difficult. Because everybody goes there for opportunities. How do you get them back to Northern Cape? You must decentralize the economy and develop uh, Northern Cape. The people will come back. No one wants to stay in that Johannesburg. They want to stay with their families. That's why every month, every third month, they go back home. That's where their heart is. But give them economic opportunities. Give them jobs where they stay. Give them water infrastructure. Give them road infrastructure. Give them reliable electricity. They will come back home. Comrades, your village is not like investors don't like it. And you say, no, there is no shopping mall here. They don't want us. There is no a mall in our village. No. There is no one who is going to invest in a place where there is no road. His cars are going to be broken even before he invests. So when you want investment, you don't make noise as government that I want investment. You just go and build proper road and put in water and put in electricity. You will hear people saying, I want to build my factory on this side. I want to build my, the mall this side because the areas are accessible. So you have to make sure that areas are accessible to attract investment in those areas. When you attract investment in those areas, you are decentralizing the economy. Therefore, you depopulate how they and people work where they come from. Comrades, the dream of fast trains is not a dream that is not real. You know, if we want our people to remain in Kimberley, to stay in Kimberley, it actually takes three hours, by the way, to get to Santin from Soweto if you are going to work, you are going to start work at 8 o'clock. It's three hours. Because if you don't prepare early, you're going to be stuck in traffic. Three hours. So when we say we're putting speed train, it means one hour train from Kimberley to Johannesburg. So who will want to stay in Johannesburg if in an hour's time I can be at work and then in an hour's time when I'm done, I'm back home. So when they say, where will the money come from? I always say to them, the Chinese already have got speed trains. I'm going to ask them to come and do it here. And I don't want money and I'm not going to give them money. They must come and build it themselves and uh, charge passengers for that. I'm not interfering. Get build, operate, transfer. But after 30 years, they must bring that uh, train, speed train to me as government. I give them 30 years to operate, to make their money. Because I'm not putting money. I don't have money even when I want to put money. So allow people who have money to come and do the speed train. On condition, after 30 years, they give it to us. Imagine if we did that in 1994. There will be a proper speed train between Johannesburg and Cape Town where tourism is easy, where travel of goods and people is made easy. That's how you make the economy to function. So we need a government that is not tied to the West. Europe and America and UK saying to you, you can't go to China and ask for anything. You can't go to Russia and ask for anything. Nuclear. Russia wanted to come and build nuclear power station. If we had allowed them then, there will not be load shedding today. But the Europeans are refusing because they are not going to benefit from that transaction. So you need a clear government that is going to say to America, you can't tell me who my friends are. I don't choose friends for you. You can't choose friends for me. We are in a crisis 
of load shedding. Any help that comes which gives our people reliable electricity, that help must be welcomed. On condition at some point, South Africans will take over the ownership of such. There is no area where you must travel for 10 kilometers or so without a tar road. You can even go to Patrice Mutsipe and say to him, hey, my guy, we have a problem. Can you build a road from here to that other end because we don't have budget? And then you put a toll gate. Our people will pay reasonable amount as long as there is convenience that is brought about by private sector. Come and build it. But on condition, after 30 years, you transfer it back to the state because you would have made back your money. So the private sector must also be invited to come and resolve these problems of infrastructure that we are confronted with as the government. Comrades, I say to you, children must go to school for free because education is not a commodity. So, when a child turns three, they must go to early childhood development. We must build those crutches next to where our people stay. There should be one or two crutches here in watering. And in the wall of uh, Umsumbuvu, seven watts, every watt has got two, three crutches that are paid by government that are attended to by well-trained people who know how to teach children. The reason why I want children to go to school at three years is because children of white people go to school at three years. Ours we left them at home. Look after them. Umkulu no kogo are not trained to teach children. That's why if you just listen to them when they try to teach a child to speak, you'll realize they are not trained. They go ta ta te ta ta ta. When you are busy ta te to ta. A white child there at three years, same age as yours. One plus one is two. Two plus two is four. Yours is da, de, de, de. Then, yours is going to meet one plus one when he turns seven years at grade one. The next thing he doesn't perform well. But no, this child is slow, is a danda, it is not true. They were taken to school when they were old. And to teach an old dog new tricks, it's very difficult. It's very, it's not, it's not going to be easy. That's why today, they are just fighting in classrooms there, they are stepping teachers, they are doing all manner of things because education is not in their blood system. A white girl, when we go to school holidays, she takes six books, five books. I want to finish these books during these holidays. Ours don't do that. Uh -uh, they send their friend, please call me. When the friend answers, do you have savannah? Hey, I'm thirsty, I'm bored. I'm bored. When you get bored, you bo get bored to savannah. You don't get bored to books. White people get bought to books. They expand their knowledge. And then you end up saying white people are better than us. They are not better than us. Our priorities are mixed up. We need to get our priorities right as black people in order to get this nation back into order. Fighters, even primary, education must be free. High school education must be free. Not only that, we must give them free uniform and school shoes. And then these fools want to argue with me and say, where will the money come from for uniform and all of that? I said to them, money will come 
from where you are taking the money when you buy prisoners uniform because you buy prisoners uniform but you don't buy children uniform you give them uniform for free so these children must be prisoners for them to see free uniform if you go into prison now they wear a very strong shoe called parabella leather shiny our children don't have shoes that's why everybody who wants to feel good about himself or herself says i'm going to donate shoes our children are dependent on the feelings of some individual no on arrival first day at school they must receive the books uniform shoes everything at school they must eat breakfast even in the crash and then lunch because these children when they enter school in the morning why do you teach them because this is the logic of feeding scheme they say no we give them food so that they can learn with an empty stomach so what happens to the learning between the morning and break because when i come into school no one knows if i've eaten or not and don't ask them if they've eaten because they're going to say yes they are scared to be laughed at by their friends just give them food those who have not all of them those who have not eaten they will eat those who are full they will say no i'm full it's okay but let's give them food all of them because when does it start to be a problem after break that they can concentrate with an empty stomach the empty stomach begins immediately when they wake up and there's nothing we can give them we say to them no hang in there break is coming and then this thing of feeding the kids as well is also to help to improve the performance of africans in schools why you can't concentrate with an empty stomach when the teacher is talking the stomach is also talking your attention is divided between the stomach and the teacher that's why you don't get it right so a child at school must just be a child and never have to think of where will the next meal come from where will my uniform come from hey my uniform doesn't look like the other ones it is a uniform which means they must all look the same that's the kind of environment we want to create why prisoners eat breakfast lunch supper free there's no day they miss that prisoners have got a flushing toilet you don't have yet you are not a prisoner but living in worse condition than prisoners prisoners don't have electricity you don't have and prisoners don't even know what is load shedding because all prisons have received generators and some of the prisons by the way they are a size of kusasa same same size if you can buy a generator for a prison why can't you buy it for every township where you know they will be affected by load shedding i'm not fighting prisoners all i'm saying is we cannot live in conditions that are worse than those of the prisoners because everybody will want to go to prison that's why people are not scared to go to prison life must be so nice outside and too hot inside we're going to give you uniform when you get into prison but once it doesn't matter whether you're saving 15 years or what uh -uh. you will receive it the first day you arrive in prison look after it don't gain weight it's your problem we don't care if the pants are torn it's not our problem look after that uniform you are a prisoner you did the wrong things to us you can't be treated like a king so we have to send send a strong message fighters 
we need to fight poverty. One of the immediate ways of fighting poverty is social grants. You see, these grants that were given to our people, the aim is to defeat poverty. Why? South Africans, 18.6 million of them, live in extreme poverty. Then you go to check how many people benefit from Sasa. It's 18.8 million. I said to you, 18.6 extreme poverty, 18.8 get Sasa, which confirms that indeed 18.6 million live in extreme poverty. So it means all these beneficiaries of Sasa are living in extreme poverty, 18.6. Sasa beneficiaries, 18.8. So, only 2% doesn't live in extreme poverty. And you know who are those? It's white people. The agri-white people are also on Sasa thing. So, when you check the levels of these people, as to, okay, on top of Sasa, what are the conditions? you find that this 18.8, 18.6 live in extreme poverty. What is extreme poverty? Extreme poverty is when a person can't spend more than 41 rand per day. The sun rises and goes to sleep. In everything you have done, you have not spent more than 41 rand. That is 18.6 million people who don't spend more than 41 rand per day in South Africa. Then ask yourself, how much budget does Cyril Ramaphosa's dogs spend per day? Because Ramaphosa's dogs can't survive with 41 rand per day. You are not spending more than 41 rand per day. So I am here to say to you, this can be stopped. And then, when you go into a normal poverty, I don't know if there's something called normal poverty, from extreme poverty to normal poverty, you've got 38.8 million people in South Africa who lived in poverty in 2023 alone. Out of 60 million, half of 60 states, 38.8, more than half of the population lived through poverty in South Africa. All of this inequality is allowed by the ANC. How do you fight inequality and defeat poverty? You need to give Abu Kogo Nabum Kul 4,000 rand upwards per month. We need to increase it per month because these ones are our food soldiers against poverty. When you give Abumkulu a grant, they don't spend it on a quarter of a bread and a, a king size or a can of a Coke. No, they buy a chicken and buy a bag of mealy meal. Go and put it behind the door. Where now you think that is for you, you think it's for your family. Wait until a poor neighbor comes. Argog. I don't have. Can you please share? Ukogo will respond and say, Hey, Nami, I don't have. But let us born. Then we share with everyone through these gogos. So when you give them money, you know they're not going to eat it alone as selfish people. They will share it with everyone who's poor in our communities. That's how you fight poverty. You take money where money will have an impact. The children as well must get 1,000 upward child grant because this money they are getting is not defeating poverty. I said to you, prisoners eat lunch, breakfast, supper. I said these kids are going to school to eat now breakfast, lunch. Where are they going to get supper if we don't give them 1,000 upwards? They need to, when they go home, they must be guaranteed that there is food. So that they don't leave. They don't leave 
school to go and look for peace jobs in the farms in order to compliment at home or go and do gardens at white people's houses like me and you grew up. That's why we are an angry uh, generation. That's why we are a traumatized generation because we had to be adults when we were young. Our children can't go through the same thing. That's why we must give them 1,000 upwards. And when I say I'm giving you 1,000 upwards, I don't mean children must go and make children. I said to children, I'm going to give you free education. Go to school. When you are a child, don't make a child. You are an embarrassment. And not only to your family, you embarrass the whole of Umsombovu. Because when they say teenage pregnancy, they say Umsombovu teenage pregnancy. They don't talk about your family. And when we go to Kimberley, we say we are from Colesberg. But oh, hey, those ones of teenage pregnancy, because of your stupidity. Don't involve us in your stupidity. Go to school and better your families. Even tertiary education will be free. Because everybody who leaves high school, when you enter tertiary, no one must ask you if your mother is waking or not. They must look at your marks. Through your marks, again, you qualify. As to what is your surname, who's your father, who, what do you want to do with my father? Do you want my father or you want my brains? Look at my results and deal with me. I am here and I'm saying to you, I'm a university material. Stop telling me about my father. I'm here. And by the time I go to university, I've got an ID. So don't do that of asking children, go and do avidavid to show your mother is not waking. Go and do avidavid to show that your father died. You don't know my father died, but you are the same government which issued a death certificate and said he's dead. So why are you saying I must prove after you proved to me that he's dead? What kind of a stupid government is this? Why do you ask me if my mother is waking or not? Because you are the ones who are giving my mother sasa. You should know that my ID when you punch my ID, if we had systems in this country, it's supposed to show the details of all your parents. This is so-and-so's child and so-and-so. They don't have that. And they say they are a government. If you are a regular year in Colesberg Clinic or Hospital of Government, and they say these are your allergies, and then you, it happens, you go and you collapse in Kimberley. And then you can't talk. They take you into the hospital. They will not know what are your allergies. That's why a person goes to the hospital saying, I've got a teeth problem. And then he comes back paralyzed. Because they don't know the medical history of this person. But since you have been this age, you have gone to hospitals many times, doctors, all this. Everywhere you go, you must still feel a file. Here's a file. Here's a file. Why am I feeling files when all of you here are earning money as workers from the same government? You don't fill forms here. You fill forms once. You are an employee of government. Why can't I be a patient of government? And government must know about me. Everywhere I go, the government must know about me. So at tertiary level, there is also something called uh, NSFAS. We need to cancel that devil. Because that devil, it's a corruption of blatant demand. And he eats the money with the communist party. They steal the money from our children. We cancel NSFAS. We pay universities directly. And then this children's allowance must go straight into their pockets. 
Because Sasa beneficiaries have got Sasa card. And they get money from Sasa card. So the student must also have a student aid card. Where we put money directly into their accounts. And where they sleep, those accommodations, residences must be approved and must be in good condition. And one of the conditions is that there must be Wi-Fi in those residences, Wi-Fi in a classroom, Wi-Fi at library, because information must be accessible to children at any time. You know, you saw I brought Zile, Yeh, Sima and them. Some of you, you are youth, I brought them to come and encourage you to go and vote, to see that other youth are voting. But some of you, you don't know them. You're like, who are these ones now? Where do they come from now? And those people are on YouTube. They have got a podcast where issues of young people are discussed. But the youth of Kusasa can't know them because it has got no access to Wi-Fi. And data is very expensive. So you deny these children information. When they leave here to go and study in Joburg, they look like they are lost. Kanti, they could have seen everything in Joburg, in Cape Town, in America, whatever they wanted to see, they could have seen it through Wi-Fi, internet. Then, they've got information. They don't become gullible when they arrive in Johannesburg, and some of them get prostituted because they think this is a way of life. They must know there are sharks there before they even arrive there. So that when there is a tendency that suggests that this one is a human trafficker, they must know. So our children go as innocent people. Then they become victims because they don't have access to information. Fighters, we want clinics to open 24-7. Because ANC clinics, they close at 4 o'clock. And uh, others don't even have clinics, Shem. Th these are seven wards. We can put clinic in each and every ward, which operates 24-7. And it can't be a clinic without an ambulance. Because when a patient is critically ill, the ambulance must go and fetch that person. Because that person can't come to clinic. And if you don't fetch them, they are going to bring them to the clinic through wheelbarrows, carrying them in wheelbarrows. And where is the human dignity there? So every clinic must have an ambulance, must have a doctor, must have nurses, must have medicine, must have the latest medical equipment. Because medicine is evolving. Here yeah, in Kusasa in Colsberg, if we, we are, if you say if you say let's go to a clinic because you've got an eye problem, when you arrive, they give you panado for an eye. Then you go, hey, uh, I've got a knee problem, panado. Hey, I've got a running stomach, panado. That's what they do. There's no medicine. Abu Gogo attending. If you say to them, when they are sick, I'm taking you to the public hospital, they cry. They don't want to go. You like why? They say, No, I'm going to die. Those people are going to kill me. The hospitals have become mutuaries. And we cannot have our public hospitals becoming mutuaries. Our hospital must be in good condition, state of the art, because they are servicing old people who don't have the medical aid. So you don't have to have a medical aid for you to have life. So please, when you vote, you must know that all of this can be fixed. There is a problem of drugs in every township we are in this house or that house 
we know they sell nyaup but police are doing nothing about it we go there we tell police uh, wait there is a, a person there who sells drugs nothing because once you say that the house sells drugs the police must now begin to have interest in that house even set up traps for that house where is the money of the crime intelligence where is the money of the community spies because if we pay community spies very well we will get who's committing crime in our communities why are we failing to defeat crime the drugs are being transported in police vehicles in the vans of the police and ambulances because police vans and ambulances can't be stopped at the roadblocks the people who are supposed to apply the law are the ones who are violating the law i came driving all the way to here i've never seen a police van when i arrive here there is a police van there there is a police van. what do they want here there are no criminals here no one wants police here. why must we be policed like we are criminals we are not criminals they must go there to go and look for criminals on the streets and leave a peaceful meeting Bona. When you say black people are gathering, that's where they are rushing to. In town here in Carlsberg, I passed a game where the white people, I don't know if it's a sports day or what, full of white people play. There is no single fan of police policing white people when they are gathered. But every time we gather, police come. But when we look for police, there are no way to be found. As we're sitting here, someone is calling that police station. They say there is no van. A van is sailing. It's here doing what? I don't know. We can police ourselves. We are not scared of anyone. We are not scared of the ANC. We are not scared of the DA. No one can disrupt us. No one can fight us. We can protect ourselves. Let police fight criminals. Let police fight drugs and nyaupe. Police must never be friends with criminals. These gangsters that are known, police must be marking them and dropping them one by one. Anyone who takes out a gun and points it at a policeman, that person should have said goodbye at home. It's the end of you. Once you point a gun at one of our own, that is the end. Because why? In South Africa, the murder rate is too high. And it's as if we are in a war when there is no war. If you go to Ukraine, the murder rate of Ukraine, which is in, in a war, is less than the murder rate of South Africa. So, it means criminals have declared war against our people. The police must respond toe for toe if we want to clean the streets. Because we cannot allow a situation where we don't even allow our children to play outside because we are scared of these criminals. We want the streets to be cleaned so that the children can play outside, but equally the children can go and do a study group at night without being scared of some rapist who's waiting somewhere to go and attack them. Let's make the streets safe. We are some must be an example of what a black township can look like with visible policing. Comrades, when I say I didn't see a van of the police, I'm saying there is no police visibility. And when there's no police visibility, 
there's going to be crime. Because a criminal before they break into a house, but check out coast bill, they go up and down to check what is the story. So when they are busy doing that, a van must pass go that way. And then a van pa- then the mind comes back, hey, yeah, we're going to be arrested here. Yeah. That's what police visibility does. No, we are sa- someone breaks into a house, carries a TV on the streets like this. No one is stopping him. No one is asking him, where did you get this TV from? And it's very simple to get a criminal who steals TV. When they carry the TV, you must just ask them, whose TV is this? He's going to say it's mine. Or Correct? Where is the, the cable? Because normally when they steal the Nyao beast, they take out the cable and carry that thing. So they will never have a cable. Then you know, no man, we have to talk. Uh, come inside. Including anyone who's just moving randomly. Police have got a right of say, come here. What is the story? Because you are just up and down, up and down here. Is there a problem? Hi, hi, hi. If anything wrong happens here, you, you will know. Already everybody knows that you, if I make a mistake, they told me they are going to come for me. And that person will also become a police officer because they said anything wrong. If someone commit anything wrong, is the first one to tell police, eh, eh, it's not me, it's that person, it's not me. So you help people to police their streets. We're going to hire more and more police officers from you, the unemployed youth of Northern Cape, to safeguard South Africa and look after South Africa. It is possible for our country to be peaceful and it it is possible for it to be one of the countries where there is law and order. Abu Kogo Siakela on the 29th of May, Masio Fota, Siakela Lento Yagutai, Sufoto Lumandela, Sibuya Kutene Kongolosi, Umatiba Ulele, Ulele Umatiba, please leave Nelson Mandela to rest in peace. This person who is the ANC president now, nothing of him looks like Mandela. If you doubt that maybe it's a Mandela in another form, just go and look at the nose. You will see Mandela never had this nose. So, there is nothing with this one that looks like Mandela. This one is a criminal. It's a criminal. Ramaphosa is a criminal. Mandela never stole money and hide it in mattresses and sofas. Dollars in mattresses and sofas. Kuyasa, there is no water. People are sleeping, hungry. The president is sleeping on top of dollars. And police till today, they have not arrested him. Let's say, no, the money is not stolen. But this guy has already accepted of committing crime. He says, I sold buffaloes and they paid in dollars. Now, in terms of South African law, no one is allowed to trade with foreign currency. The only currency that works in South Africa is the rent. So he didn't say no. He said yes, they bought in dollars. Police have not arrested him because they are in cahoots with a criminal. A police case has been opened against Ramaphosa. The prosecutors were ready to prosecute him. And then Batoi took away the docket. Till today, they don't know where the docket is. So we are here to ask for your vote because we must go back to that parliament to go and look for that palapala docket which has disappeared because only the EFF can fight corruption. Only the EFF can fight the corrupt president. We have done it with Zuma, pay back the money. It was the EFF that made it possible. 
and we are asking once more what three and all seven words send us back to cape town we have business to conclude we will never rest until we have removed these criminals fighters 29 may we don't drink alcohol we wake up sober why we are going to an interview who goes to interview under the influence of alcohol because when i said don't drink on the 29 in one meeting someone took out a quart of a beer so I, 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 I said the boers like you like that they know when you are drunk you will never defend your land when you are drunk you will never defend your minerals when you are drunk you will never fight for your freedom no one can defend the land under the influence of alcohol we are going to an interview on the 29th of may and you are going to interview yourself they will give you a ballot paper you go into a voting booth alone you look at that ballot paper and start asking yourself questions what do i want in life you talk to yourself you interview yourself that's why we no longer use the heart now now we must think deeply about it abu gogo must think of the future of their children and grandchildren they must say even if we failed our destination is nearer what about these ones who are coming after us let's create a future for them once you have answered to yourself they think you don't know english they just hear english coming from a voting booth or enough is enough or ballot paper number one eff ballot paper number two eff ballot paper number three eff because 29 may is the freedom day the real freedom is 29 may 27 april 1994 is 29 may 2024 2024 is our 1994 the real freedom day is on the 29 of may economic freedom is coming on the 29 of may i want all of you in what three um sombo of pixly all over when you wake up you must go on top of the mountains to look at union building and you must see the red flag flying on top of the union building on the 30th of may amanda amanda viva ya fa viva viva ya fa viva Forward to victory, forward. Forward to victory, forward. Niaba Sabana. Niaba Sabana. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you, Mama.